All right, welcome back. Let's continue talking about Apple's iPad announced today. Big news. Tony Sakanahi of San Francisco Bernstein with us and our Matt Miller and Chris Valerio still out in San Francisco. Um, Tony, you wanted to talk a little bit about the size. You mentioned that that was one of the, the interesting things. Smaller than you expected or, or what? I'd say on the smaller side. So the, you know, the blogsphere had, had said this will probably be a 10 or 11 inch screen. Right. Um, the device is a 10 inch device, but the screen is smaller than that because there's a bezel around it. And, you know, this is a mock-up based on the dimensions that Apple published. But it looks kind of small. Yeah, it, it, it is. The white part is the screen. And so if you imagine a, a keypad on here, um, that is considerably smaller than you typically have on a uh, on a notebook computer. So I, I do think that this is probably going to be less of a, a computing device and more of an entertainment device. My initial reaction is in terms of uh, the kind of functionality that they uh, talked about is right. this is really like a large iPod touch. Is that a big enough market it, for them to go after if it's like the entertainment market? It, you know, it will evolve over time. I think it is trying to position itself between PCs at the high end right. and between iPod touches at the lower end. And we think over time there's going to be a continuum of devices and certain people are going to like uh, the functionality of that mid-sized device. Others are going to say, I'm happy with hey. my notebook and I'm happy with my iPod touch. Hey, Tony, but you know one of the things that Steve Jobs actually said at the conference was that he says, we think we have the goods to make this between the mobile and the laptop a real, actual, viable marketplace. So you, do you think he's wrong about that? We can, it'll be more than 1% of the market penetration here? I, I, you know, it's very difficult to say. And again, this ecosystem is going to change over time. You're going to have more books that get added. You're going to have more gaming capability that's going to get added. There's no camera functionality on the device today. So uh, this is going to expand. The, the fact is consumers only have so many dollars in their wallets, and you're having a lot of different devices. So there are choices between a mobile phone, between a iPod Touch, between this iPad now and a notebook computer, and you're going to have people make choices. By definition, there's going to have to be give and take in terms of the number of devices someone can have. Well, well, well and how many times does uh, Apple step up to the plate for this? I mean, they tried the Newton. That was a failure. They tried the MacBook Air. Nobody bought that one. And this is the same kind of thing. I mean, there's no disk drive, so you can't watch a movie. There's not enough memory to download serious amounts of media. I mean, it just doesn't do what the MacBook does, and you've already got an iPod. Well, again, we'll see. The memory could increase. There may be compression algorithms, in which case we can download substantial comment, uh, content. So we'll need to see how that evolves. That said, Kindle has proven that there's a market for e-readers at $250. And this is more than an e-reader. This is a color screen. It has uh, web access through Wi-Fi or through wireless. So this is, this is an enhanced reading device at an enhanced price. And some people will value that incremental functionality, and some people won't. So go back to the 3 million devices in the first year. Are you still holding by that? Yeah, I, I think it's difficult to say. Our, our sense Why? Well, because we've had great devices like the first iPod sold only a million in its first year. Right. The Kindle, first year, only a million devices. So knowing the trajectory is difficult. What we've tried to encourage investors to think about is in year one, there aren't that many first mover adopters for any device, even wildly successful devices. So our, our belief had been that this might sell 3 million units. It's a bit lower price point, so perhaps it could sell more than we thought. Right. That may be at the expense of cannibalization of the iPod Touch. Hey, Tony, I was there at the event in the second row. A lot of people obviously talking about how Steve Jobs looked, a little bit healthier, still skinny. How important do you think he is still into this play uh, for the growth, the continual growth of Apple? I mean, Steve's, Steve is the creative visionary behind Apple, um, and so he's obviously very important to the company. Uh, that said, you know, he was on a leave of absence for uh, six months last year. Uh, the company did extremely well. Tim Cook proved very able. Uh, their products uh, rolled out as scheduled, and they continue to be very innovative and unique products. So, yes, he's extremely important, and investors care about his presence at the company. That said, it's not a one-person company. He has instilled that culture among, uh, among his people. Tony, just got a few seconds left here. You know the stock has had a great run. You've got an outperform. Um, the news that we got on the iPad, enough to keep this stock moving higher, or do you still want to see something more from Apple? I think, you know, we think the stock is attractively valued up to $250. 
$200. So with this stock trading around $200 and $205 now, we think there's still room. To the degree that this is bigger than we expect or the iPhone turns out to be even bigger than we expect, there's upside from there. This is a great secular story. And we watched kind of the stock move today. Initially, it sold off a little bit when the introduction first came out. And then when the pricing started to come out, we did see the, the, the stock go up. That makes sense, that kind of trade today, just quickly? Yeah, I think so, because a lower price means more ability to sell more units. Right, and so easy to ramp up. Sense. All right.